This project is going to be a 40 amp hour battery box to complement my HF radio station in a box setup for when I'm off grid and don't have uh, standard electrical power. Links to where you can buy all of the components will be included in the description below. The box itself came from Northern Tool and Equipment. It looks like a plastic version of a military surplus ammunition can. It will hold four of these 10 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries at a weight of about 28 pounds total. I also purchased two chassis mounted Anderson power pole connection boxes, one for the front and one for the back. I'll explain why later on. I also have a cheap $5 uh, voltmeter and a simple single pull, single throw toggle switch that I got from Radio Shack. You'll of course need some heat shrink and some wire. On the back of the box I cut a hole appropriate size for one of the chassis mounted Anderson power pole blocks. When doing this I just took my Dremel tool and cut it out the square to fit. I would suggest using a piece of either scrap plastic or a piece of balsa wood, something like that, to make your template with and then outline it there. It'll make it a lot easier and save you from screwing up your ammo can. Do the same thing on the front for this power pole connection. They just snap in just like they're meant to be. This top one here is made for my voltmeter to go. I haven't cut the spot for the single pull, single throw toggle switch yet because I want to do a dry run of all the wiring to be sure that everything works and nothing burns up before I commit it to putting it in the, into the box. The reason I have a set on the front and on the back, back set for me is going to be for connection to my charging source, whether it's an electrical battery charger, uh, my foldable solar panel, or even a vehicle electrical system that I've run an extension cable from. The front is going to be strictly for connecting a cable from the box to a receptacle on my uh, HF station in the box. Also, one thing that I did learn while cutting the hole for the voltmeter is be sure you orient it the right direction inside the box when you drill the mounting holes for the box. I put mine in upside down and I now have an extra set of holes that you just fill with some Bondo or whatever your favorite filler, wood filler or anything else would be and paint it to cover it up. But you don't want to look like a doofus so do it right the first time. Now that we've got the Anderson power pole connection in the back we can move on to hooking up the four sealed lead acid batteries in parallel. I continued on with the 10 gauge wire ran a separate stub piece connecting the positive and negative terminals on each to the main 10 gauge wire lead that will go to the other Anderson power pole and the toggle switch and voltmeter on the front. I want to do a real quick test just to make sure I'm getting the voltages that I expect to. Twelve point six nine volts. Not bad for the four batteries. There's probably a couple of them that are kind of low and just needed to be charged back up once I get everything in place. So I can live with that for right now. But more importantly, I want to make sure I've got my polarity set right. So make sure I'm not frying anything later on. Plugging in my trusty little traffic light polarity checker that I mentioned earlier on on my blog, if those of you are just checking it. I connect it into the back. As you can see, it lights up green. Green is good, red bad. Next thing I'll do will be mount the chassis mounted Anderson power pole block here, the voltmeter, 
and also my toggle switch. But before I do any of that, I'm going to take all these batteries out so I'm not inadvertently arcing something and messing something up. I've got my power poles, voltmeter, and toggle switch all in place and wired to the batteries. I did have to sacrifice one of the 10 amp hour batteries just for space, to free up some space, so that the angle that the wires would have to uh, bend for the power poles and for the toggle switch didn't put too much strain on them. Uh, if I decide to go with a, find a bigger can, maybe I can go back and put the fourth one in later on. We hit the toggle switch. As you can see, 12.7 volts. And what do you know, I even wired it right. I get a green light on my polarity checker. I consider this project finished. I plan on taking it out as soon as possible and hooking it up to my FT-857 and see what kind of uh, operations I can get out of it. I'll put an addendum to this video uh, with the results of that and uh, I look forward to answering any questions you may have in, in the comments and also you will find links to Anderson power pole connections and the voltmeter and also the can itself uh, posted in the description for this video. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much.